Johnny Dollar. Hi, Johnny. This is Earl Foreman. Earl. You know, Tri-State Life and Casual. Sure, in dear old Los Angeles, California. No. I should say West Los Angeles. No, sir. Only I thought you'd given up the insurance business to retire out there in the Golden West. No more, if You were going to do nothing but laze around on that California sunshine, maybe play a little golf. Hey, wait a minute. Did I hear you throw in a no somewhere along the line there? <laughs> you sure did. No to what? California. Huh? I mean that Mike, my darling wife, and I are back home in Florida again. No kidding. No kidding. Right back here in Sarasota. I'll be darn. When that happened? A couple of months ago. And by way of keeping out of mischief, I've taken over the Tri-State office again. Oh, I get it. You're back to your old habit of putting in a pitch for me to get on down there and do some fishing with you. Maybe. Among other things. Other things like what? Like insurance investigation. What else? How's your musical ear? Well, I think I can tell the difference between a fiddle and a bass drum, if that's any help. It may be, Johnny. It may be. What's up, Earl? As long as the company will pay your expenses, why don't you come on down here and see? Okay. Why not? The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri-State Life and Casualty Insurance Company office in Sarasota, Florida. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the fiddle-faddle matter. Expense account item one, 7940 taxi out to Bradley Field and a plane heading south. The flight was quick and easy, and by early afternoon, I was in the office of 1306 Main Street that Earl shares with another old friend of mine, Don Boomhauer, a prominent real estate operator. Don't let Earl kid you for one minute, Johnny. What do you mean by that, Don? The <laughs> only real reason he wants you down here is to go fishing with him. And maybe in the hopes he can get you to settle down here, which uh, wouldn't be such a bad idea, Johnny. Now, now, stop making with the pitch, Don. You dig up Earl for me so I can get to work in his insurance problem. Well, I tried. And he did very well. Tell me, do you know anything about why he wants me down here? I told you. No, I mean about the job he has for me. Oh, that, that. Well, Johnny, it's probably the most unimportant case anybody ever had of you. Uh, did you ever hear of Mr. Joseph R. Tetrick? Nope, never heard of him. Real big in oil and steel and copper a while back. Came down here to retire. Built himself a big house at the north end of St. Armand's Key, uh, really on uh, Lido Shores. And? Well, uh, that house of his includes an air-conditioned walk-in vault big enough for the average bank. And why? Why? It's to keep his collection of fiddles in. Collection of fiddles? That's right, violins. Fine, rare violins. Oh, you must be <laughs> quite a musician. Nope, doesn't know a hemisemidemic quaver from a G-string. What'd you say? I wouldn't know the difference myself, Johnny, so don't ask. But uh, that collection is his one pride and joy in life. A couple of genuine strads. Uh, you've heard of a strad of areas, haven't you? And everybody. Plus one called an Amati and a Paganini or a Pagliacci or uh, whatever it is in a Guinarius. And... <laughs> oh, boy, that collection must be worth hundreds of thousands, Johnny. Well, what's happened? Well, now, the one he cares about most is a, uh, was a uh, Bissiac. Never heard of that one. Well, now, apparently this man Bissiac over in Italy... And uh, not too long ago at that, made a whole raft of real good fiddles. You know, uh, worth $1,000, $2,000 a piece. Mm -hmm. I'll take your word for it. But uh, this one, they call it the Canary on account of its almost yellow color. Unlike the others he made, this one, uh, the one Tetrick has, uh, had, was just about the finest that he ever... Well, anyhow, Earl insured it for 10000 Get to the point, Don. Well, like he always does, every couple of months, and I mean with all those good fiddles, you know, Tetrick took the Bissiac to a fiddle maker for a kind of a checkup, uh, just to make sure it was still strung up properly and okay and all, you know. Well, you say that he doesn't play himself. No, 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 not a note, sweeter, sir. Seems like an awful waste. Yes, I know, it's a waste of all of them. But uh, anyhow, he took the uh, Bissiac to this man for his regular checkup. Took it to whom, Don? Uh, well, uh, he's an old Italian, name of uh, Antonio Di Polito. And uh, he's been down here over a year now, has his little shop at the end of Palm Avenue. Di Polito? Yeah, yeah, Di Polito. Anyhow, uh, he took the fiddle to him yesterday. And uh, this morning early, the police found the place broken into, old man Di Polito on the floor, still out from a bang on the head. And, of course, uh, well, that uh, Bissiac fiddle was gone. Mm-hmm. Now, have the police any leads on who got into that shop and how? Nary a one, Johnny. But 
Yeah. Now, about two hours ago, Tetrick called Earl up on the phone and told him to hop on out to his home on the key that he was certain he had the answer to the whole thing. That's where Earl is now. Huh? Yes, yes. And uh, if you ask me if Tetrick does know who did it, you've wasted your time coming down here. And I'd better try calling Earl at the Tetrick place. You mind if I use this phone? Uh, wait a minute. Uh, hold everything, Johnny. Don't bother. He's just parked his car out front. Oh, good. What's the matter with him? Oh, yes, yes. He does look kind of funny, doesn't he? Hi, Earl. How are you? I should say, what's all the gloom about? Well, hi, Johnny. I, I'm glad you got down here so fast. Uh, tell me, Earl, uh, did old man Tetrick really know who took his fiddle and how and why, uh, like he said he did on the phone? I guess he must have done. I guess he must have. Must have? Yes, Johnny. By the time I got out there to his place, Tetrick was dead. Oh, murdered. Outside eating takes on extra pleasure when you serve 7 Up. It can be hot dogs on the grill, hamburgers on the broiler, or charcoal cooking that's really extra fancy. 7 Up just plain makes them all taste better. That's because 7 Up sharpens up your taste buds. Trout fresh from a stream, backyard barbecue, picnic at the beach. 7 Up is the greatest outdoor eating companion you can take along. So pure and wholesome, everyone can enjoy it, regardless of age. When you're planning a cookout, include plenty of 7-Up. Fresh up with 7-Up. By the time Earl Pullman got back to his office to tell us about the murder of Joseph Tetrick, the Sarasota police had arrived there and a full-scale investigation was underway. Results so far, nothing. Apparently, someone Tetrick knew had gone to see him. There were no signs of the house having been broken into. He let them in himself and got slugged to death with just one blow with a heavy crystal ashtray. But the police have found no fingerprints, no clues of any kind, not yet. So if you want to go on over there and talk with the police, well, it might be a good idea, Johnny. Yeah, I suppose so. Don, uh, Earl, either of you have an extra car I can use for a while? Oh, sure, Johnny, sure. Here, uh, take these keys. Uh, it's the light tan job out in the back there. Thanks, Don. Oh, better still, I'll drive you over there, Johnny. No, Earl, to where I'm going, I think I'd rather go alone. The little shop of Antonio DiPolito, there at the end of Palm Avenue, was just that. Little and dirty and thoroughly cluttered with the tools of his trade. In the dusty fly speck window, he had half a dozen or so dark brown, cheap violins and a stack of fiber cases. Inside, on a couple of shelves serving as a counter, was the usual stock of strings, rosin, mutes, and so on. Mr. DiPolito sat behind his workbench, a bandage around his head concentrating on a refinishing job on the fiddle in his lap. Now, let me say again that I'm no expert, but it did strike me that he was doing a rather good job with the varnish that he so carefully, painstakingly applied. He's a kid. He's a crazy kid. The body of the violin took on a sort of old-world patina under his expert hand. These are children. They get us okay. They say, drop the violin to make it a crack in the belly. That's a good violin, Mr. DiPolito? Maybe 150 250 dollars, mm -hmm. but... Uh, too good for the kid. He don't take care of him. So I got to fix up. Put on the varnish. Then he's to look like a five hundred on it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. Now I'm uh, hanging it up to here. And it's dry. Yeah. And now, uh, what am I going to do for you, mister? I'm an insurance investigator, Mr. DiPolito. Oh. Oh, yes, uh, it's a terrible thing. Uh, yes, uh, that happened last night. The Bisiak, the beautiful, beautiful canary Bisiak. I call it canary because of its color, I understand. Yes. Because it had sort of a yellowish cast to it, hmm? 
And because of the way it could sing like only the most beautiful violin of a master can sing. Only my own boy, my young Antonio. Yeah, but now the violin is gone. Um, and he, what a terrible thing. You want to tell me what happened to the Bissian? I was awakened on it, uh, Mr. Mr. Dollar, Johnny Dollar. You see, I was alone. It was very late. And because it was uh, the beautiful Abisiac, and the pull it down the shades and at the front, I locked the door, just like I'm telling the police, so that nobody would have seen me in a so late. Yes. And I'm, uh, well, uh, I guess I fall asleep. And then I'm going to wake up because I'm here is somebody in or behind me. Could you see who it was? By the time I'm turning my head, he's a hit to me and a hit to me. I'm going to know it. Only he's a daylight. And I'm going to see the police when he's a bang, bang on the front door. So I'm going to let him in. Well, the door was still locked then? Yes, yes. And he'd come up behind you? Yes. From the window in the back of the room. Mm -hmm. uh, come, I'm going to show you where he's a break open at the window while I'm asleep. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah. Here. You see where he cut the glass? Where he make it the hole to reach in and lock the window? He used a glass cutter and probably some tape to keep the glass from falling and waking you. That's what the police says. Looks like the work of an amateur, though. Well, why do you say that, Mr. Dollar? Well, you see, instead of a clean, round stroke with a glass cutter, he made a whole flock of straight scratches with it. You see him? Huh? You see that? Yeah. The kind of clumsy grooves that he cut? See, see, see. But he's thinking he hit me. Now, Mr. Dippolito. Yes? Uh, like I've said a couple of times now, I don't know very much about these things. But you tell me, where could a violin, a fine violin like that, where would a person be able to buy one? Well, uh, be sick. I mean, surely a little place like this of yours wouldn't sell them. Oh, no. At least if those you have in the window are any sample of the stock you'd carry. Oh, no. Fine violin is like a fine jewel. That's exactly what I'm thinking of. And it's a lot more conspicuous. So whoever stole a thing like the Bissiac would either have to hide it away for years or get rid of it immediately before the alarm was out. Mm. The only place I know of that would handle a fine violin. Oh. Yeah, I, I kind of thought you might be coming over here. Feeling any better, Dipolito? Uh, see, you. thank you, Mr. Bowman. Good. The only place I know of that would trade in a fiddle like the Bissiac and those Strads and the rest, well, as a matter of fact, that's where old Tetrick got all his violins. Where, Earl? The famous Wurlitzer collection up in Chicago. Sure. I could be wrong, but the way I understand it, practically all the great violins in the world have passed through their hands. Okay, then. I'm on expense account, right? Well, of course, but Johnny, what just happened to Mr. Tetrick is far more important than the fiddle right now. Or is the fiddle the key to that murder? Murder? I'll leave Don's car here. Huh? That is, if you'll drive me out to the airport. <laughs> Item two is 7905, plane fare to Chicago. I had a late dinner and spent the night at the Blackstone Hotel. That's item three. Call it uh, $15 even. In the morning, within five minutes of the time they opened for business, I was talking with one of the experts at the Wurlitzer Collection. Well, of course, Mr. Dollar will immediately notify every one of our branches, too, New York, Los Angeles, and so on, to be on watch for that busy act. Good. And, of course, we'll let you know right away if it shows up. Beyond that, however, I don't know what we can do. Well, I'm afraid I don't either. Terrible shame if it's caught into the wrong hands. Only a true artist could do justice to that violin, but then, of course, no such artist would dare to use it. Why do you say that? Well, because it's now known to be stolen, too easily identified because of its unique, almost yellow color. Oh, I see. Poor Emil will be heartbroken when he learns of this. Emil? Emil Victor, who once owned it, played it in concerts all over the world before he brought it to us and we sold it to Mr. Tetrick. Tell me, uh, why did this Emil Victor ever sell it? Well, you didn't know? Tragic accident to his hands that also left him blind? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I didn't know. Matter of fact, I, uh, I'm afraid that I never even heard of Mr. Emil. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah? That name, of course. Emil? No, no. 
Oh, son of a gun, I knew that name had rung a bell. Oh, who's Mr. Dollar? How stupid can I be? I'm afraid I don't. Listen, under... Emil Victor played that busy act for years. Hmm? Oh, 15 or 20 at least. All right, then blind or not, he'd recognize it immediately if he heard it. But I thought you just said Emil's was not the name that uh, rang a bell, so to speak. Don't you worry about that. Just tell me where I can find this Emil Victor and get me a list of concert bookings anywhere, anywhere in this country. Concert bookings? Now, I don't understand. You will when I recover that busy act. Who did it? How did they do it? What in the world did they do? Who put the men in men called smoking? Alpine, that's true. Alpine always tastes rich, never smokes rough. Try Alpine filter cigarettes. Who put the men in men called smoking? Alpine. That's who. Who? Alpine. That's who. Nice. Item four is 420 for a couple of phone calls to Earl Pullman. Yes, the man I was now looking for had been in Sarasota on a brief stopover before resuming a concert tour. Okay, now with the help of the concert schedule... I knew where he was going to play next. That very night, as a matter of fact. Item five, a dollar ninety for a cab to the flat where the once famous violinist, poor, blind, old Emil Victor lived. I told him about my suspicions, of what I planned to do with his help. But I cannot believe it, Mr. Dollar, that a fine young musician could, and that his own father... And perhaps he didn't know what he was saying. Because of that bang in the head? Who really knows how hard he was hit? Maybe that wallop on the head was faked. But if he was unconscious the rest of the night... Well, that's what he says. Who can prove otherwise? Look, he distinctly told me the shades were down so that no one could see him working on the Bissiac. I see. Yet later... Later he told me that when he came to, he could see the cop. Could see him outside knocking on the door. Uh, Mr. Dunn. Now, one of those statements is false. But I really deserve a kick in the pants because of those scratches, because I didn't get wise to them right then and there. Scratches, Mr. Dollar? Yes, from a glass cutter on the window in the back of the shop to make it look like that was the way somebody had got in there. But don't you see? I could feel them. I could feel the grooves there with my fingernail on the inside of that window. But that only proves... And another thing. Now, I don't know how much the old man knows about fixing fiddles. But when it comes to refinishing them, he is great. That much I saw for myself. Refinish, recolor, call it whatever you like. But my biggest boner was in failing to pick up the cue when he was talking about the Bissiac. What do you mean? He said, if only my own boy, my young Antonio. Don't you see what he was trying to get across? Was if only his own boy could have, could play a fiddle like that. He tried to plant the idea that the boy never would. But, Mr. Dollar... Let's go, Mr. Vitton. But don't you see, if it was as you suspect, if the boy, if young Antonio does have it, if his father did change the color... That's right? exactly what I'm betting on. But then who could prove it's the Canary Bissiac? Are you kidding? You. Me? Come on. We've got to get to a plane to that concert in El Paso tonight. <laughs> Item 6, 172.50. Taxi to the airport and plane fares for the two of us to Fort Worth and a hop westward to El Paso. There, thanks to a captain of police, our tickets for the symphony concert cost us nothing because, yes, the soloist for the evening was young Antonio de Polito. I'll say this for him. The short, dark, intense-looking kid could really play beautifully on the rather reddish-brown-colored violin that he used. as my own hand and mind and spirit are a part of me. 
When the first note that young Antonio played, I knew it was the Bisiak. Good. Even though it does not quite sound the same as it did. What do you mean? Because of the varnish he must have used in the old man to change the color. Mm-hmm. And there, there is a dryness to the tone that was not there before. It is just as robust, as commanding in its tone as ever. Yet there is a dryness, too, that only I would hear. But it is the Bisiak, the Canary Bisiak. Of that there can be no question. Okay, then come on. We'll pick up the police and wait for him in his dressing room. After the concert was finished, there in the dressing room when he was faced with the facts as I now knew them, temperamental young Antonio screamed and fought like a tiger. Literally had to be held down by the police. But then when the old master Emil tore into him and really put his heart in it, the kid broke down and confessed. Not only to theft of the fiddle with his father's help, but to the murder of Mr. Tetrick. It seems that Tetrick had called him in to tell him that he suspected him. And when Tetrick picked up the phone and called Earl Pullman, Tony struck him down and killed him. Oh, I've told you. I've told you everything. So you can take me away. You can kill me, too. But he deserved to die. Did he, Tony? Keeping such a priceless instrument locked up in a vault. It had to be played and played and played as only a true artist like, like me can play it. To thrill an audience with the warmth and color and sound that, that only I, Antonio, can bring from, from anything I touch. <laughs> and now... Thanks to you, I shall play no more. No? All this talent of mine, this matchless technique wasted. All the years that my father spent working, begging, even stealing so that I could study. And the hours and days and years of practice that I spent developing this wonderful gift that I have wasted. Is it? But it's the world that loses. Never again will an audience be able to feel the outpouring of my soul and the music of my violin. Without an audience to feel the power of my every note, I shall play no more. Why not, Tony? What? Well, if an audience is all you need, it seems to me that where you're going, you can be pretty sure of a captive one. So... From here on out, it's up to the courts. And that means for his father, too. You know, I wonder if the Tepic estate will put the priceless fiddles in that collection in the hands of musicians where they can be used and appreciated. I hope so. Expense account total, including back to Chicago with Emil Victor and a trip home. That is, after a few days of fishing with Earl Pullman back in Sarasota. 68180. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. If you ever suffer a touch of arthritis or rheumatism and you've never tried mentholatum deep heating rub, you can't know how good its deep heating action can make you feel. As you massage it into painful areas, you feel its deep heating action. You know relief is on its way. Mentholatum deep heating rub is an extra strong combination of active ingredients for safe, temporary relief of minor arthritic rheumatic pain. Use greaseless, stainless Mentholatum deep heating rub often. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the old-fashioned murder matter. As if there was anything new-fashioned about it. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr. Musical supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also heard in our cast were Santos Ortega as DiPolito, Leon Janney as Emil Victor, Richard Holland as Tony, Frank Behrens as Don Boomauer, 
Sam Gray as Earl Foreman, and Bill Lipton as the violin expert. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is our Hannah Speaks. the last for accuracy, expanded CBS News on the CBS Radio Network. Once there was a smoker, an ordinary cigarette smoker. He was neither happy nor unhappy about his cigarette. Then one day he tried a Salem cigarette. Because he heard that Salem refreshes your taste. He soon learned that Salem does refresh your taste. So softly, so gently, that when you take a puff, it's springtime. And Salem is menthol fresh, with rich tobacco taste. And a modern filter, too. And air softens every puff. Now he is a Salem smoker and very happy. CBS Radio.